Yes, thank you very much. Um, so I'm going to talk about a, a piece of work that's ongoing that fits within what's called the Digital School, which is a much larger project led by Professor Craig Fear at the University of Nottingham, um, which is a Horizon 2020 research project. Um, but it's not, I'm not really going to be talking about the digital score, but it sort of sits within in that framing. But just briefly a bit of background. Craig's view on the digital score is not a digital rendering of a traditional sort of um, music score, but rather thinking about how digital technologies um, can transform what we consider a score to be. And his view is that maybe all facets of the materials and tools, digital media, um, software, hardware, that we use to drive and shape what musicians might perform could be considered as a wrapper, a whole of a digital score. So just bear that in mind for sort of what I'm going to talk about. So what I'm going to talk about is a project that we call Jess Plus, um, which I'll come to in a moment as to sort of what that might mean. Um, but it's an intelligent digital score system um, for share, shared creativity with a mixed ensemble of able bodied and disabled musicians. In this case, the digital score is an AI controlling this robotic arm. Um, and in this drawing, um, sorry, image, the robotic arm is drawing um, shapes on a piece of paper. And you can't quite see it, but the musicians are placed around and they're watching this happen in real time. And the project is a collaboration with um, members of Symphonia Viva, Orchestras Live, who are a national charity that supports sort of access to orchestral music, and Digit Music, um, who sort of uh, their composer um, controller was being demoed earlier during lunchtime. And we're working with three musicians, um, the first of which is Jess Fisher, and that's where the name of the project Jess Plus comes from. Jess Fisher is a um, disabled uh, musician. She's a member of the Able Orchestra, which is a sort of Nottinghamshire-based project that's been running for a few years with groups of disabled um, musicians and able-bodied musicians from orchestras like Symphonia Viva, the Halle Orchestra, and they compose and devise new works and perform them. They performed at the BBC Proms a few years ago and a, a few other sort of high-profile um, performances. But she also works across a number of other ensembles. She's increasingly taken a leadership role in music education and she collaborates with Digit Music and has had some input on the development of the, the um, composer controller, which is based upon um, the wheel con wheelchair controller that she uses. Um, and I can't remember who it was. I think, I'm not sure whether it was three guys this morning were talking about it. Um, but in terms of um, Jess and other people that are sort of used to those sort of controllers have those tactile um, abilities to be able to control it, so it's transferring those mappings onto a, a music setting. And the other two musicians in this project are Claire Barbara and Deirdre um, Benchik. Um, they're members of Symphonia Viva, classically trained. They do do a bunch of community-based work, and sometimes they improvise as part of that, but they wouldn't call themselves confident improvisers. And they have limited experience of working with technologies. And briefly, the process that we're still in the, in the middle of, in some ways, is an iterative series of workshops where we get Jess, Claire, and Deirdre together with the, um, with the team. They sit and improvise with this AI robotic arm that draws and gestures. And that's basically the framing. And then we discuss it. They improvise some more, and then we discuss. They go away, the team doing the AI stuff, then do some development based on the feedback and the, um, the nature of the discussions. We get together for the next workshop, and so on. And we've just had the fourth workshop, um, and we've got the final sharing workshop, which is where people from Orchestras Live, Symphonia Viva, and Digit Music will come along 
and hope that they get open their checkbooks and say, you need to do some more work on this and, you know, so on. So there's a bit of a human AI feedback loop going on here. Um, and I'll try and explain the diagram. We've got three musicians. The AI is listening to those three musicians playing via a microphone in the room. That's fed into the, the AI. But also Jess is wearing an EEG headset and a galvanic skin response um, sensor on her on a hand. That's also fed into the AI. The AI, and I'll briefly go through what's going on there in a moment, makes some decisions about the incoming data and then sends out some responses to the robotic arm that performs gestures, which the musicians are watching. You know, it's drawing, it's gesturing, um, and they respond to it. So it's a feedback loop that's going on there. The basic algorithm structure, um, you've got the data input, the microphone in the room, the EEG headset, and the uh, galvanic skin response. That goes into the AI factory. Now, my background's not in this stuff. I've recently joined the project working with Craig, so please don't ask any um, you know, kind of digging questions about what on earth's going on here. But basically, there's multiple streams going through the AI. The AI has been trained on an embodied data set, which is a bunch of recordings, video and audio of jazz musicians performing. And their audio and physical gestures are the belief system of the AI. That's what it understands about gestures. And the AI sort of has um, a set of algorithms that determine what data stream it listens to. Is it listening to the microphone? Is it listening to the EEG? Is it listening to the galvanic skin response? Is it listening to the position it's currently in and what it's just done? And it moves between these data streams to then determine how it outputs and the robotic arm and then gestures. So this, it's not Mickey Mousing the data inputs. It's making decisions that might be observably responsive to an input, but might not be. So it is actually kind of, um, there is a dialogue, a conversation going on there. So this is a, not a great video clip, but a very brief one of the robot arm drawing. using a few different robot arms that have different degrees of freedom. We've also tried it not drawing. So obviously you look at that and you think, okay, it's drawing a graphic score in real time, and that's what the musicians are responding to. But we've also taken the pens away and adjusted it just so it gestures in three-dimensional space as well. Thank you. So there's a bunch of different things potentially being communicated. There's the inked notation, um, and the musicians talk about anticipating its movements, or following its movements, or responding after the fact to things that are just drawn or moved. And obviously, when it is drawing, when it does create a, um, uh, this, this image, you've got this artifact that lives on afterwards. But then also, 
some of our work has been about just, just three-dimensional gesturing in space. Oh, okay. So this is still going on, but certain observations. The musicians have been on a journey from suspicion to trust. They came into this thinking, okay, really, you know, what are we supposed to do with this? What is it supposed to be doing to us? I've no idea what's going on under the hood, how this works. But they've actually come to um, really enjoy the sessions here. And I must say, um, part of the success of what the, the positive feedback that we've been getting from the musicians is partly to do with our method in some ways, is that we've had a number of very long workshops that have been open, been exploratory, just trying and testing things, and they've had empty, clear space just to explore. Um, and they found that really sort of beneficial in terms of getting to know and getting to understand the system. The system is a good listener, even though it doesn't parrot what they do, they can tell when it's working. We've had a number of occasions where something's gone wrong and we didn't realise the microphone was turned off. And they're saying, it, I don't know, it just doesn't seem to be listening to me that well today. And it's, oh, hang on, the microphone's not working. And you put it back on and it's hard to, they find it difficult to sort of explain tangibly what's going on. But there's this, this, these sorts of discussions have been happening time and time again. It's an accepting and non-judgmental partner. They can play brilliantly, badly, and it still is there for them, and it will do what it will do, and it will inspire them, and it's non-judgmental. And there's, that, again, has come up um, lots and lots, and it's given them a certain freedom in, in their improvisation. In the last session, because we've got this sharing in the next workshop, we were saying, OK, do you want to try and maybe devise a piece to perform when the, you know, the other people come in? And they're like, no, no, we don't want that, actually. We just enjoy the in-the-moment music making. So it has given them some confidence and freed them to improvise that they haven't found in other, in other settings. And that, in turn, has sort of tested or developed their improvisational um, capabilities. Um, they have interesting relationships and individual relationships with the robot arm and they found it difficult to establish and discuss what this thing is. Um, for Claire and Deirdre it's a creative companist. For Jess it's an extension of her and she's um, brutally protective of it. Thank you. Um, she wasn't happy when we removed the pens um, because she felt we were shackling its creative output. And a lot of the discussion ended up being that she, she sort of felt that it was adding an additional layer of expression, particularly via the artefact that it draws and creates, um, that gave her something more to the music making. And she was very protective of it because she sort of felt, um, I suppose this, this extension she felt of her was that it was, um, it was very relevant to a lot of the sort of biases that she felt she's received over the years in terms of her being a musician and her music making and being disabled and what she was capable of. And that came through as a really strong message in, in what she discussed. And I think I'm Go on, out, you've got about a minute, so out of time. What else is there to say? Um, as the workshops have gone on, Claire and Deirdre focus solely on the robot arm and use that to inspire their music making. Jess has increasingly moved away from not looking at the robot arm and just working with Claire and Deirdre. And what she's interested in is the drawn artefact at the end the legacy that lives on from the music they make. So it's, it's kind of developed differing relationships and engagements with it, which is, is quite interesting as well. Um, and also, when we have adapted it, taking the pens away, different robot arms, they don't feel the system has changed. It's adapted, and it's adapted its communication technique rather than it being a new thing that's in front of me. So I'll stop there, probably don't have time for questions. Yes, no, I think we are, we are out of time for questions, afraid, but I have loads I'd love to ask, which is a shame, but we'll, I guess we'll, we can yeah. bombard you with them later. At the break or something. At the break. Like
Thanks, so, thank you very much to Adrian.